Last week on the channel, I promised a tutorial for a self-hosted, DNS-based ad blocking and adult content filter. That product is NX Filter, and it's a product that I've used for a number of years for clients who wanted to control what content was making it onto their network. Today, I'm gonna show you how to install that on a Raspberry Pi alongside the Unify controller that I built last week. Let's get started. Let's see here, we got Irish Red, Stout, IPA. There it is. It's a Fractal Design Celsius Plus S24 Prisma. All right. However you're trying to stay cool, make the right choice with the all new Fractal Design Celsius Plus line of all-in-one liquid coolers. Available in 240, 280, and 360 millimeter sizes, along with your choice of dynamic or Prisma RGB fans, you'll be sure to find the right cooler for your system. Click the link down in the video description to learn more. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. So first off, what is NX Filter? It's a self-hosted DNS server that controls adult content or any other content you'd like to block coming into your network. Think of it kind of like a pie hole on steroids, where pie hole only blocks ads, NX Filter can block a number of different categories and is fully customizable. The best part is, while NX Filter is a commercial product, it is also free to use for anyone who has less than 25 users, making it perfect for home users or even small office spaces. Today, we're going to install this on a Raspberry Pi. And in fact, it's the same Raspberry Pi that I installed my Unify controller on last week. You can click right up here if you wanna see that tutorial. If you don't need a Unify controller alongside your NX Filter install, that's totally okay. This tutorial will still apply to you as it will work for a standalone installation. You can also follow these steps to get NX Filter working in a virtual machine or Docker environment. The choice is absolutely up to you. So let's go ahead and get this thing rolling. So first step is we are going to SSH over to our Raspberry Pi. And again, mine is at 192.168.1.5. Once you've logged into your Raspberry Pi, the first step is to install Java. Now, if you followed my Unify tutorial last week, you can actually skip this step as Java is already installed as part of the Unify controller. So we're going to do a sudo apt update to update all of our package managers. Then we're going to type in sudo apt install openjdk-8-jre-headless. So as you can see, in my case, Java was already installed. But if you're starting with a fresh install, well, now you're all caught up. Next up is to download the NX Filter install package, which is done with a wget command directly from their website. We're going to be installing the current version as of today, which is version 4.3.6.5. And that's done by typing in wget http pub.nxfilter.org slash nxfilter 4.3.6.5.deb. And as usual, all of these commands will be written down below in the video description. Once the NX Filter package is downloaded, now it's time to install it. That's done by typing in sudo dpkg i nxfilter and the rest of the file name. By the way, handy tip that I just used right there if you're working inside of Linux. If you start typing a file or folder name, you can simply hit tab to autocomplete it inside the terminal. This saves you a lot of time and some possible frustration from needing to remember what the file name is. Next up is a step you're only gonna to wanna to run if you're running a Raspberry Pi 4 with two or more gigabytes of system memory. That's because we're gonna increase the amount of memory that NX Filter grabs from 768 megabytes up to a full one gigabyte. You obviously can't do this if your Raspberry Pi only has one gigabyte of system memory. So we're gonna type in sudo nano slash NX Filter slash bin slash startup dot sh. That brings us to this file right here. There's two lines that we need to change. One of them is the XMX 768 meg. We're gonna change that to 1024. And we're gonna do the same thing down on the line a couple lines below it. We're gonna hit Control X to exit. We're gonna say, yes, we wanna save and then enter to save the same file name. Next up, we're going to enable NX Filter as a service so it will automatically start up at system boot. To do that, we're gonna type in sudo systemctl enable NX Filter. And rather than rebooting the system to start up NX Filter, we can simply start the service manually by typing in sudo systemctl start NX Filter. Now this next part does take a little bit of time as NX Filter needs to build its initial database before it starts up. So if you wanna monitor that, you can actually type in tail-f slash NX Filter slash log slash NX Filter dot log. Once you see the line stop scrolling like matrix text, uh, NX Filter should be all installed and ready to configure. So we're gonna go ahead and open up a web browser and go to 192.168.1.5 slash admin. Default username is admin and default password is admin. 
And the first thing we're going to do inside of here, like all good sysadmins, is change the default password by going to config and admin. We can enter the current password right here. And we're going to enter a brand new password right here. Submit, and it's changed. Now that we have that password changed, we're ready to start configuring NX filter. First off, we're going to tell it what our local network is so it knows what IP addresses it's allowed to filter as sources. So we're going to go to config and allowed IP. And under allowed IP for DNS, we're going to type in 192.168.1. It's a little bit weird as we're not going to type in a dot zero or a slash 24. We're just going to say if the IP address begins with this sequence of characters, you're allowed to filter it. Once you've done that, go ahead and click submit. Next up, we're going to configure our upstream DNS. That is the DNS server that NX filter receives all of its information from. So we're going to go to DNS and then click on setup. And the defaults is 8888 and 8844 for Google. If you'd like to use Cloudflare or OpenDNS or anyone else, you're more than welcome to enter that here. And then under local DNS, we're going to type in 192.168.1.1, which is the address of my UniFi controller. By default, NX Filter is just a DNS server and won't block any traffic by default. To change that, we're going to go into Policy, click on Policy, and we're going to configure a new policy called Adult Filter. Now, when creating this new policy, you can enter any name and description you'd like. However, for the template policy, you want to select Default as the template and then hit Submit. Right down here, it created our new adult filter policy, and we're going to go ahead and click Edit. While editing the policy, you can see all the different categories that NX Filter can be configured to block. Everything from a standard ad blocker and phishing and malware, to more adult content sites like alcohol and tobacco and porn-related websites. To get this policy all set up, we're going to do a couple of different things. First up, we're going to go up to the Add Remove button and click that box right there. This removes all adware with a blank page, very similar to how all browser extensions work, such as uBlock or AdBlock. Next, we're going to come down to Safe Search, and we're going to turn that on to Strict. That will force Safe Search for all compatible sites, such as Bing, Google, YouTube, etc. Next up, we're going to select the categories we actually want to block. So in this case, I'm going to click on Phishing and Malware. We're going to click Add Remove, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Porn. And I'm going to click Submit. So now this policy is ready to roll. Unfortunately, no one is actually assigned to be using this policy. Everyone goes to the default policy by default. Kind of makes sense when you say it out loud, doesn't it? So first off, we're going to go into Config and then to Setup, and we're going to Enable Authentication, and then hit Submit. Next, we're going to go over to User, User, and then type in the name of a new user. In this case, I'm going to type in Filtered. Next, go on over to Edit, and we're going to select under Work Time Policy, the Adult Filter Policy. Now, as you might have guessed, there is a Work Time Policy and a Free Time Policy. This can be based on what time of day it is and what policy you want to apply to certain devices. So if you don't want them to use social networks during the day, but it's okay at night, you can adjust that accordingly. However, in this case, we're just going to create a global policy by selecting the Adult Filter Policy and then saying the Free Time Policy is the same as the Work Time Policy. Next up, we're going to define a range of IP addresses that this policy applies to. That is, anyone with a client IP address that matches this range will get this policy. So in my case, we're going to type in the entire 200 range, or 192.168.1.200 through 192.168.1.254. And we're going to click Add. Now note, if you get a warning up here about authentication not being enabled, that means you didn't check the box under Config and Setup. Please go do that now. Once your user has been created, we're also going to configure an unfiltered user group, and we're going to name it Unfiltered, strangely enough. We're going to go over to Edit, we're going to select Default as the work time policy, and we're going to enter all of the rest of our IP address range, that is 192.168.1.1 through 192.168.1.199. So now it's time to test everything out. First off, inside of our DHCP configuration, I need to point all clients to go to my new DNS server, which is NX Filter. So under my Unify network, I'm going to go down here to Settings. I'm going to go over to Networks, and I'm going to edit the LAN network right here. And scroll down just a little bit, and right here under DHCP Name Server, we're going to manually configure 192.168.1.5. And we're going to hit Save. The new DNS server will not apply to any clients currently connected to your network. It will only apply when they request a new DHCP lease. To force a Windows client to get a new DHCP lease, type in ipconfig slash release, and then ipconfig slash renew. Once that's done, type in ipconfig slash all, and then scroll up to your network adapter, and you should be able to see the DNS server with the 192.168.1.5 network address. If you've seen that, you've done it correctly. 
Also, as you can see right here, my IPv4 address is 192.168.1.140, which means I am currently in the unfiltered group. In order to test this out and not get an instant demonetization from YouTube for going to certain hubs of the internet, I'm going to create my own test site that I know is a safe for work site. In this case, I'm gonna use Hackaday. To add Hackaday as a site that I don't want to visit, I'm gonna to go to category and then go to system. Down below are all of the different categories that NX Filter is configured to read from. We're gonna go over to porn and we're gonna add a domain to porn. In this case, we're gonna do asterisk.hackaday.com and hit add domain. Now, as my IP address is currently 192.168.1.140, I am part of the unfiltered group, so I can go to hackaday.com. So from the admin side of things, how do I configure a user to be in the filtered group? Well, we're just gonna change their static IP address inside of Unify. To do that, we're gonna go to our Unify control panel and go over to clients. You can see right here is my Windows PC at 192.168.1.140. If we edit their settings, and I move my camera over here so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. We're gonna go over to the settings for that client and go down to network. And we're going to say, use a fixed static IP address. And I'm gonna give it the address of 201 and then save. Now again, I'm gonna to have to do an IP config release and renew to get my system to grab the new IP address. And there we go, I'm now at 201. Now, if we try to visit hackaday.com, you're gonna be met with an HTTPS security issue that actually cannot be bypassed. You can only go back. This is actually the block page for our security filter. For HTTPS sites, you'll see a security vulnerability. For HTTP sites, you will see a block page just like this. And to remove hackaday.com from that list, we're gonna do the same thing in reverse. We're gonna to go to category and then system, go over to porn. We're actually gonna click add domain and then we're gonna click the little X right next to hackaday.com. That will remove it from the porn category. And that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of how NX Filter works. Now, there are a couple other things that you probably want to know. First off, there is a whitelist edition, which you can go to whitelist and then domain. If a website is being blocked incorrectly on your network, you can add it to the whitelist right here. So in this case, we're gonna do anything.hackaday.com again, and we're gonna bypass filtering and then hit submit. It'll add that to the global whitelist and then all policies should allow hackaday.com. The last thing I would do once I've tested that NX filter is working properly is actually narrow the DHCP scope on my Unify controller so you can control whether devices are filtered by default or not. To do that, we're gonna go over to settings, we're gonna go over to networks, and we're gonna edit our LAN network again. Now right here under DHCP range is what you wanna pay attention to. As you remember inside of NX filter, we set up 192.168.1.200 and up addresses to be automatically filtered and anything one through 199 to not be filtered. If I want any device that connects to my network to be filtered by default, I would set my IP range only in the 200s, that is 200 through 254. The cool thing about Unify is you can actually assign addresses outside of your DHCP range. So let's say you wanted a device not to be filtered, you could assign that address at the 100 level. And if I don't want devices to be filtered by default, I only want to select few devices to be filtered, then I'd reset my range from, say, something around 20 to 199. So long as a device doesn't have an IP address starting with 200, it would not be filtered. And that's pretty much all you need to get up and running with NX Filter. As I said, it's a very lightweight system. It runs on a Raspberry Pi and can run alongside a number of other services. As I said, NX Filter is free for up to 25 users, meaning it's good for most home environments. However, it does come with a free trial for up to 100,000 users if you'd like to test it in a much larger environment. If you need more than the 25 licenses Jahas List comes with, you can buy more on the nxfilter.org website. Or if you don't need the customization of selecting which clients are filtered and which are not, you can select the free glob list right here, which is free for an unlimited number of clients. And that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer them. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And be sure to follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans. If you like what you see on this channel and you'd like to help out financially, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link down in the video description below. A minimum donation of $1 gets you access to my exclusive Discord server as well, where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, all. That one's not so good. <laughs>